It is meant by plastic. No metal. It's like we can carry. So when you take a big cutlet and small cutlet, so when you <laughs> they hold them together, so that appears like that. The right thing. No metal. It's not covered by anything. Just like a cut. So what is this? What is the function of this ribosome? To synthesize, to produce proteins to the cell. Because proteins are very essential for us to make our structures. They are the very important for everyone. The cells or as the organisms, the proteins are very important for us. Why? To develop our structures. Our structures are made up of proteins. These proteins are synthesized by ribosome organelle, the smallest organelle in the cell. Understood? So, uh, in the hand of take out your hand of not not cute. And yesterday, which I gave to you, in the hand out. So there is an opener, there is an opener called endoplasmic reticulum. Find it. That means there is an opener called endoplasmic reticulum. So then among this so remember among this endoplasmic reticulum, so there are small dots. Can you see? Can you see the dots? Small black dots. Those are ribosomes. See the small dots in the cell. They are the ribosomes. Small dots, ribosomes. Because they are very small. The smallest organelle in the cell. Only can be visible under electron microscope. We can't see them in light microscope. And also it present in prokaryotic cells also. And remember, even in the mitochondria organelle, Chloroplast organelle, there are some ribosomes. Ribosomes are normally present in our cytoplasm, but inside the mitochondria, inside the chloroplast, also we can see the ribosome. That's why we labeled yesterday in mitochondrial structure the ribosome. Can you remember? In the structure, when you are drawing the structure of mitochondria, you label small dot as ribosome. Yes, in any type of cell, the ribosomes are present. Even in protist, fungi, plants, animals, bacteria. There are slight differences between the bacterial ribosome and eukaryotic ribosome. But remember, all the, organ all the organisms contain these ribosomes because the function of the ribosome is to synthesize proteins. Then right down the top, the ribosomes. Now, so I will be asking a question what are cellulosomes and cellulose? And what is the difference? Remember, uh, in your syllabus, actually, we are not talking about centrosomes or centromeres, but it is an organelle present in animal cells. Centriole or centrosome. And it is made up of protein uh, tubes, which are called microtubules. Protein tubules, right? So then the, the triplets of protein tubules, nine triplets of protein tubules are circularly arranged to form this structure called centrosome. Centrosome. Sorry, uh, that single structure is called centriole. Centriole. But in the cell, there is a, uh, the period for cell division. During the cell division time, these centrioles are getting duplicated and two centrioles arranged together like this to form the centrosome. To form the centrosome. One structure is called centriole, both are called centrosome. Ribosome. The smaller organelles in a cell, ribosomes are the smallest organelles in the cell. Next point, 
they can be present in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Ribosomes are made by RNA and proteins. What is the exact place of ribosome synthesis in a cell? Where it produces? In the nucleus? Nucleolus. Nucleolus inside the nucleus is the place where the ribosomes are produced. Okay? Ribos, they are as I mentioned in the nucleolus of the nucleus, nucleolus of the nucleus. Basically, we are because to get the clear idea about the experiment, basically, we will do it. But in the exam, you will not have physical pressure. You have a way of alternating the data. Next one. Function of the ribosome is synthesis of proteins. And draw a small ribosome, small subunit, large subunit. When we take a plant cell, it has a nucleus. Yes. It has mitochondria. It contains chloroplast. And also, it has a very big organism. It is called the large central vacuole. It's called vacuole. Vacuole is the largest organism in the plant cell. But the largest organelle in the animal cell is the nucleus. Vacuole only present in plant cells. But there are some other, there are animal cells which contain vacuole, but they are very small. We are not, uh, sometimes we are not considered them as vacuole, but some, uh, there are some regions which put these stored in, and other substances are getting stored very small places. They are named as vacuoles in animal cells. But we are considering that uh, the animal cells are absent of vacuum. But plant cells, they do have a large central vacuum. Vacuum means this is like a balloon inside the cell. It's like a balloon. It's a membrane bound structure. There's a membrane surrounded to the vacuum. There's a membrane. Inside the vacuum, there is a fluid. There's a substance which mostly it contains water. Plus, it contains sugar. It contains iron, it contains base products of the cell and amino acids. There are and pigments, pigments, the color pigments also present in this vacuole. So this collectively, the substances present inside the vacuole is named as the cell stack. If the substance inside the vacuole, which is filled in the vacuole, is named as a cell sap. So, what is included in the cell sap? Mostly water plus sugars, amino acids, ions like sodium, potassium, like ions, and base products of the plant cell. Base. So, during the metabolic reactions, produce waste, they throw in the vacuole and treatment. So therefore, the, this vacuole is functioning as a storage place of the cell, store room. Because, for example, think that waste products, when the waste products are collecting in the cytoplasm, it is a disturbance for the normal cellular functions. Waste, waste is not good for the cell. So therefore, the plant is trying to store the waste in the vacuum. Then cytoplasm is free. Then cytoplasm can conduct many cellular Yes, because it's free of base products. And the other extra substances, everything is stored in the vacuole. If the, if, if the cell has extra sugar, extra ions, they are also stored. Yeah. And the pigments means colorful uh, agents, colorful things. So for example, now, do you have an experience with that uh, the blue color flower petals thing, the milk control one? When you're crushing that 
petals. So you had get purple or blue color. Why? The pigments of that plant are stored in the vacuole. So when you crush the cells, vacuole also getting damaged and the pigments are coming out. And beetroot, what is the color of beetroot? Black, black color? Blue. Blue. What is that? Red. Purple. Blue. Maroon. Black. White. Beetroot. It's 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 closer to the red color. Red color. So when when after cutting a beetroot, so when you put it into water, the water gets red color. Why? Why you are cutting? The vacuoles are also cutting in the cells. The sap is coming out. Pigments are dissolving more. What is the uh, uh, taste of beetroot? Beetroot. Sour. Bitter. Oh, what is the taste of I am asking? Sugar it is. Sweet. Why sweet? Why the beet is sweet? Because it contains sugars. Normally, uh, there's a country called Cuba. Do you know Cuba? Yeah. The Cuba, the, that country produced their sugars using this beet root. We are producing our sugar in sugar cane. We are producing in Sri Lanka, we are making our sugar using the sugar cane flour. But that country is producing sugar using beet root. It's brown color. That sugar is brown color. And there is no specific shape for the vegetable. There is no specific shape for the vegetable. From plant cell to plant cell, they, they, they get different shape. Because they are covered by a membrane. But you know, mitochondria has a specific shape. Chloroplast has a specific shape. Nucleus has a shape. Ribosome has a shape. But as a membrane-bound structure, the vacuole cannot maintain a specific shape. But it's somewhat circular. Okay, then in your handout, find the vacuole. Find the vacuole, a separate diagram for vacuole even. And there is a vacuole. And also find the plant cell. Plant cell in the diagram. Plant cell. In the plant cell, label the vacuole. Identify the vacuole and label the cell. Prokaryotic cell does not have vacuole. Why? Because it doesn't. It, the, the prokaryotic cells do not have membrane bound organelles. This is a membrane bound organelle. <laughs> vacuole is a membrane bound organ. It has a membrane surrounding it. Therefore, vacuoles are not present in prokaryotes. Vacuole is the largest organelle present in plant. Cells, animal cells who not have vacuoles, but some cells may have all vacuoles. Vacuole is membrane bound organel. It is not found in it is the next point. Yeah? Storage area of the cell which stores the ions, base product, pigments, the content. Next point. Inside the vacuole is named as cell sac. The vacuole supports the plant cell to maintain the water potential. The vacuole supports the plant cell to maintain the water potential. Water potential means the amount of water in the cell. Just throw the plant cell. Uh, the vacuole. The vacuole. Don't use any uh, the ruler or to grow the cell. Because
because they are on no cells with specific lines. In plant cells, they have a very unique structure surrounding the cell, which is called the cell wall. So, what is the function of this wall? I'm asking about this wall. That's all. It's a wall. Yes. What is the function of that wall? Uh, it protects this area. The wall protects the area. Another one. It gives a specific shape to the area. And it gives a strength to the structures. The cell wall also like that. Cell wall give a specific shape to the plant cell. And it gives a strength to the plant cell. The structural support to the plant cell. So yeah, therefore, the cell wall is playing a very important role to the plant cell. This cell wall is made up of a substance called cellulose. The plant cell wall, I am talking about plant cell. The cellulose is a carbohydrate. It's a carbohydrate made up of glucose molecules. So the cellulose are arranged as fibers. They are arranged as fibers in the wall and create the cell wall. And when you are eating green leaves, vegetables, because all the plant cells have this cell wall. So we are eating them. But we do not have enzymes in our digestive system to digest cellulose. We have enzymes to digest starch, proteins, uh, and the lipids. But we do not have cellulose digestion enzymes. Therefore, the cellulose fibers are remains with the content inside the digestive system. It remains. It's not absorbed to the body. So that is called fiber. The fiber in our food and very it, it, it provides a very good support for the digestive systems to hold water in and which prevent the constipation of the patient. What is constipation? The difficulty for removing the feces, fecal matter from your digestive system. Because lack of water, lack of fiber in the diet. That's right. If we drink less water, if we have lack of fiber in our diet, it is difficult to remove these things. That is called constipation. The cellular cell wall is fully permeable. Fully permeable. It allows any substance to pass through it. Inside the cell wall in the plant, we have cell membrane, which is a partially permeable membrane. We have the cell membrane select. What should get in? But cell wall allows any substance to pass through. Remember, not only plant cells contain the cell wall. Bacteria contain cell wall. Prokaryotes. Bacteria. Some protists, some protists, not all. Some protists contain uh, the cell wall like algae. And fungi, fungi, they contain cell wall. But animals, they never have cell wall. Animal cells never. But fungi, bacteria, some protists, they have cell wall. But remember, they are not, those cell walls are not made up of cellulose. They have different, different compounds in their cell wall. But remember, plant cells are not the only cell which contains the cell wall. There are other cells. But cellulose cell wall is present in plant cells, which give a structural support to the plant cell, strength to the plant cell, uh, specific shape to the plant cell, and also it protects the plant cell. So this is called fiber cell wall. In some cells, actually, when the cells get mature, when the cells get mature, they deposit a secondary cell wall after the primary cell wall. When the cells get mature, in some cells, not all the cells, huh? in some plant cells, they develop a secondary cell wall. When they get older, when the plant cells get older, they deposit, they, they synthesize another cell wall, which is called secondary cell wall. The cellulose one is called primary cell wall. So we are not much talking about the secondary cell wall. But remember, when the secondary cell wall deposits in the plant cell, it gets dead. So this is how the vacuole in the plastic, I said that the galloon-like structure, membrane bound one. But when it's located in the plant cell, it has realized it. So in electron microscope, you can see the vacuole like this. Large vacuole. See? The light color area. See? The white color area. This is the vacuole. Here. 
when you take this one, this diagram, these are two cells. This represents one cell, this represents the other cell. This is one cell, this is the cell wall. This is the cell wall. And these two cell walls are connected by a middle line. See? See this line? So this line is called the middle lamella. Because when the cells are connected with each other, they are connected by a particular layer. So that layer is called that uh, the cement When we arrange the bricks on the wall, we apply cement between the bricks. And Eva again. So this contains a substance called middle lamella to connect the cells with each other. It's from the cell wall. Throw carrots. Some notice within like an algae, fungi, and plant. Plant cell wall is made by cellulose. Like a carbohydrate. Is all plant cells have the primary cell wall. Some plant cells cell plant cell wall provides a structural support to the cell. It also Protect the cell and give a unique shape to the cell. Find the plant cell in the handout and label the cell board. A drop the cell. Then, now take out uh, a single page in your book. Take a single page in your book, turn it to the other side and separate it into two sections. In this side, write the topic as the animal cell. This side, plant cell. Don't write, don't write anything. Now, in this side, you need to draw an animal cell. I'm not supporting, but that animal cell should be present. These structures, the relevant structures from these. And in this side, you have to draw a plant cell and draw the all the, uh, the structures from this list and label them properly. Identify the structures in the animal cell from this list and then draw animal cell. It should be a large diagram, huh? not a very small diagram. Just that That's why I asked you to take that uh, entire sheet there. Draw a large diagram of the animal cell and represent all the items given, not all, represent what is the relevant item given in the list there and label it. The, represent the mitochondria like this and the growth plant and nucleus is enough and that you will use a single line one and ribosome put it as a small dot and in the book draw a table. In one side, write animal cell. In the side, plant cell. What are the similarities and differences between the animal cell and the plant cell? First, let's talk similarities. This side also have cell membrane. Half cytoplasm. And what about the nucleus? Yes, more half nucleus. Half nucleus. Next. Yes, half ribosome. They have mitochondria. And what are the differences? Animal cell, no cell wall. Yeah. Cell wall. No chloroplast vacuum. Large central vacuum. 
specific shape. And tell me the examples of prokaryotic cell. Bacteria. Bacteria. <laughs> then take the bacteria. Do they have a cell membrane? Uh, bacteria. Yes. Why not? He said to contain a cell membrane. Yes, they have a cell membrane. Here yeah, I, I draw the cell membrane with little folding here. And so this is I'm drawing the bacterial cell, cell membrane, bacterial cell membrane. So in this bacterial cell membrane, there are little foldings. These are the places where they produce their energy. <laughs> the places of the aerobic respiration. But our energy is produced by yeah. mitochondria. Yeah. In our cells, in eukaryotes, the energy is produced by mitochondria. We have a separate organism. But do bacteria cells, they have mitochondria? But do bacteria cells have mitochondria? No. No, 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 they don't. They don't have membrane bound organs. But there should be a way to produce their energy. That energy is produced in this structure. They are called mesosomes, right? Okay, and also in the bacterial cell, surrounding to the bacterial cell membrane, uh, this is the cell wall of the bacteria. Inside the cell membrane, they have a cell wall. It gives a specific shape and maintains the strength of the cell. But is that cell wall made up of cellulose? No, only plant cellulose are made up of cellulose. So they have a specific compound in the cell wall, which is called peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan. Glycan, no need to remember this name, but remember that is not made up of cellulose, but for your knowledge, it is made up of a substance called peptide of glycan. Right? No need to remember the name. Yeah. Now, cell wall. And surrounding the cell wall also, these bacterial cells have a capsule. It is called a slime capsule. Which contains more water. Here is a capsule. A jelly like substance is surrounded in the cell. That is to prevent the dehydration. Because bacteria are unicellular. They are not multicellular, they are unicellular. They have a single cell. So this cell can be easily dry when they are present in the normal environment. It's microscopic cell. So they are they are prevented. But the dehydration or the removing of water is prevented by this slime capsule, which is available in their surrounding their cell. Right? Capsule. So this is the capsule, this is the cell wall of bacteria, and this is the cell membrane of the bacteria. And inside the cell. Membrane, they have their cytoplasm. They have their cytoplasm. But do they have nucleus? No. No, they don't have membrane bonding. But do they have DNA? Yes. Yes, they have DNA. So they are DNA. They have just DNA molecule in their cytoplasm. DNA molecule. And also, they have very small DNA molecules. Tiny, very small circular DNA molecules also there. They have a large DNA molecule. Right? Except in that one, there are smaller, smaller DNA molecules which are named as plasmids. They have large DNA molecules. Also. Large DNA. This large DNA is called they are called bacterial forms. And in the cytoplasm, what is the only organelle they have? As I mentioned previously, prokaryotes, eukaryotes both have a particular organelle, which is membraneless ribosome. 
So they have rhinus complex. In their cytoplasm, they have they have rhinus complex. But these ribosomes are small ribosomes compared to the uh, eukaryotic cells. These ribosomes are named as 70s ribosomes. Yes, <laughs> because our ribosomes are ATPs. They have some stored food substances also, stored food theory. They store food. The most of the, the common type of food in bacteria is glycogen. In this bacterial cell, there is a structure attached to the cell membrane, which is called a flagella. It used to move. Flagella is used to move the cell from one place to the other place. Not like the fish. They are gliding. Their movement is called gliding. Gliding. Gliding means they are not swimming like a fish because it's bacteria. So they are they have very slight, very small movements, even the few micrometers. So that movements are done by this flagella. And also there are some specific structures here which are attached. To their cell membrane, PIPLI. So, this PLA, they are used to attach with each other because bacteria are not normally lived as individual cells. They always live as colonies. Colonies means groups. So, they attach? Yes. To form a group, they are attaching with each other to this PLA. That is the purpose of using the PLA. Salmonella type, there is a bacteria called Salmonella, which is very pathogenic. It, it causes diseases for us. Okay. Yes, that Salmonella has a flagella. This flagella is the toxic part of the cell, not the body. When we ingest the Salmonella bacteria into the gut, it makes diarrheal diseases. Diarrhea. That is done by this flagella. Toxic part is the flagella. 